Right. Right. Yeah, it's super good, dude. Okay, cool beans. Uh, uh, to to the YouTube okay, cool bitches watching. Uh, What's up? Uh, how you doing? How you doing? Get in the comments. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck cares? Nah, I'm not like that. Woo. I can tell. Refuse to elaborate. Yeah. 
It's like a surface to air mess. No, 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 I had four. One more time. Like, I've played Sun, and, uh, I know Pokemon names, and I know, uh, somewhat of, like, somewhat of, like, a, uh, like, a, a basic understanding of, of attacks and shit. Gotcha. I think it, it's interesting that you played Sun first because uh, that game is actually like it sub it purposely went out of its way to sub try to subvert a lot of expectations. Uh, like that game, yeah. even though it does have like structured boss fights, it doesn't have like specifically gym leaders. Uh, and like Team Skull is supposed to be like a subversion of expectations with how. Uh, uh, like with how the no uh, uh, the evil team usually goes. I guess that's a little misleading. The first Pokemon game I ever played was uh, Ruby Red, uh, or no, Alpha Red, Omega Red. Uh, uh, yeah. It was on the Omega Ruby on 3DS. I came in on a moving truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's Omega Ruby. That's I. So oh, that game like, is actually. Hey. You're right in the back. No, yeah, right? <laughs> Everyone makes fun of that. You're like, hey, you want to move around with the, the moving heavy boxes? That are, aren't tied to the ground in any way? Uh, 
So I, I really like that game. It's a remake of the Gen 3 games. But, uh... My alarm went off, sorry. But, uh... So, I'm a fan of those games. A lot of people don't like them for some reason. Uh, I think it's because those games are very easy. Where, uh... A lot easier than some past Pokemon games. But I don't think that's necessarily an issue. Nah. I mean, but yes. I mean, the the Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, I was just saying that's like the extent of my knowledge. Gotcha. And I watched a little of the anime, but I think everyone did growing up. Like, if you're like our age and a little older, you probably grew up watching the anime to an extent. I promise the game is usually more exciting than this. <laughs> this I'm literally grinding because I'm afraid of death. Oh, I I get it. Like I I did that a lot when I was when I when I played. I I grinded. Yeah. And so. Every yeah, Sun and Moon is act like it's not hard, but it has uh, some of the fights in it are are uh, pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah, I remember them being pretty pretty dang tough. Yeah. You know what? My Rowla was a fucking killer. Oh, yeah? I, I named him Ivan. Uh, Ivan? That, that's a good name for a Pokemon. Yeah. Anything that works good for a pet is usually, like, a really good name for a Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, that, uh... Like, that last fight with Lusamine when she's like all octopusified is like actually pretty yeah, hard. Yeah. Like I it, it didn't I like I had to back out of it. Oh wow. Uh well because like I feel like I felt like I went in really underpowered and so I went back and fucking tried it or well I went I, I ground a bit, and then I gotcha. went and beat her to Kizzy. Yeah, even though I'm pretty sure uh, Lily heals you before that fight, it's still, like, it's two boss fights with the same person in a row, and somehow her team jumps up, like, five levels and sh switches out members. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's like, fuck. Are you I, fucking kidding me here? So narratively, I was slightly let down by that fight, because... I thought it would have been really cool. What I was expecting to happen as soon as I saw like her big octopus form is because she's merged with the Pokemon is for her to start attacking my Pokemon. And I have to figure out what her type is on the fly and stuff like that. Uh, and in the next game that came out, they did something like that. But I thought it was really weird for her to like become this like all-powerful being and then throw out a Pokeball. <laughs> I'm so powerful now. Same. You do it for me. Squirtle. Exactly. I thought that was a bit... It, and I think Game Freak knew it was a missed opportunity, because like I said, in the next game, which is basically like a deluxe version of Sun and Moon, uh, they did that. They like yeah. threw a, a Pokemon you'd, you've never seen before at you and said, figure it out. Which is... It, it was cool. And it... Something that's really cool about that fight is, if you know what you're doing, if you know the fight's coming, it's easy to prepare for. But the challenge comes from the the fact that it's something you haven't seen yet, uh, in an, in a context that you know how to handle. So just so you know, so uh, Noodle is at level 8 right now, I think. Uh, we're trying to get him to level 10. Mm -hmm. 10 is when uh, Hank Hill comes out. <laughs> and, uh, expedite that butterfree process. Yeah, honestly, like, this is, other than trainers, this is, uh, which, the, like, the next trainer we're going to fight on the route that we're in right now. Uh... Not right now, but the route that we're about to go to. 
can be pretty tough, so I'm I'm getting our poison type repellent ready. Because on evolution, Butterfree learns uh, the move, move Confusion, which is actually a pretty decent uh, uh, Psychic type move. And the trainer we're about to fight has uh, an Ekans, which is a Poison type. Psych and Psychic beats Poison, because Mind Over Matter. Also, since you played Sun, that game had this handy feature that actually helped me learn some of the weirder type matchups. Uh, it has the uh, uh, the thing where if you fought a Pokemon before, it'll tell you if your attack is super effective. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, so I think that is a very good addition to the game. A lot of people were like, oh, it makes the games too easy, but I disagree. Because sometimes, mo most of the time, like, the charts are, the types are easy to remember, but there's 18 types. No one is going to remember all of them. Right. It's, I, uh, why, why donk on a, like, something that's made for making it easier? I I, I, exactly, I like, uh, the term that's... Uh, be, uh, usually used for it in games is accessibility, and I definitely think that that's yeah. that's not an easy thing. That's an accessibility thing, and I think they balanced it out fine because when you're playing with when you're doing like having a battle with a real person uh, for competitive sake, they don't show you that because if you're playing competitively, you should know the type chart. Uh, like that right. is kind of a skill thing, but when you're playing the campaign, it shows you because. You could be a newcomer. It could be someone like you who's not as into the All franchise. Right. Uh, and like, I, I can definitely understand something like the type chart being something that uh, deters people from the series. Ah, uh, it's 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 more for like the casual people, you know? It, yeah, exactly. And also, like, to be snorting Pokemon. Yeah. Well, also, like, I've been playing these games since I was in the second grade, and it took me until I was a teenager to remember how Psychic type works. Huh. And, you know, when you're a kid, that's when you're good at learning things. <laughs> but, like, I didn't use, like, Psychic and Dark types and, like, those types of types because I didn't know how they worked. And I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick with fire. It burns everything down. I'm good. <laughs> huh. Well, you know, that's, that's pretty much... Uh, my whole goal with Pokemon 2. The only stat I care about increasing or decreasing is HP, and it's there. <laughs> so, do you know about, uh, th this is some, some deep cut, deep cut stuff. Uh, do you know about how EVs and IVs work? Not EV the Pokemon, uh, it's a thing that stands for effort value. No. So, I completely understand why. I'll, I will try to explain it. So, uh, uh, EVs and IVs are individual numbers. Uh, IVs are individual stats that are attached to it, every Pokemon. Not every species of Pokemon, but every indivi individual Pokemon. For example, it, uh, Noodle here is a Metapod. Not every Metapod has the same IVs as this Metapod. It's kind of like genetics, kind of. How like every person has some things that they're just better at. That's how IVs work. Uh, it stands for individual value. Yeah. EVs, or e effort values, uh, uh, as the name implies effort, it uh, depends on what the Pokemon does. Uh, how it's usually calculated in basically all of the main series games is it's determined on what Pokemon you fight. For, uh, so, I don't know what Weedle gives off the top of my head, but just for the sake of uh, example, say Weedle gives attack EVs. If we kill four Weedle, uh, we will gain uh, one full attack EV. And then when we level up, it'll make our attack go up, uh, this Metapod's attack go up one stage more than it would have otherwise. Huh. It's very complicated, and it... it the reason it exists is to give, uh, is to literally make every Pokemon, uh, unique. So that, like, if we look yeah. at our stats, if we have two level 100 Pikachus, they're still different Pokemon. Uh, that's the reason it exists. But of course, 
players being players, uh, people have figured out how to abuse those systems to get the best version of every single Pokemon. Well, you know, metagamers and yeah. uh, fucking munchkins. Until, like, X and Y, which is are the games that came out, like, right before you started playing. Uh, yeah. Uh, they actually, like, Game Freak was like, okay, we see you. We're going to make it easier for the munchkins. Uh, so they added different ways to uh, affect EVs and IVs without devoting your entire life to it. Uh, because the entire competitive scene is... Uh, built on EV training, uh, and like breeding for a Pokemon that has perfect IVs. That's such a weird sentence. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's funny explaining it to someone because, like, when you're talking to someone who already knows about Pokemon, you're uh, like, you talk about like, oh yeah, I'm just breeding for IVs right now to try to get a, a good Mimikyu, but like, explaining it to someone's like, oh yeah, this is really weird. <laughs> Although I kind of, uh, I do kind of get it, because anytime someone, like, when I was first getting into D&D, uh, people explained it to me, and I was like, hold on. What? <laughs> Wait, what? How, how the fuck? Well, because I was like, oh, so, like, this is a game with, like, a lot of, like, rigid rules and stuff, because that's what games are. <laughs> no. Ooh. What if I told you that it's... The rules are always going to be different, despite the fact that there are literal textbooks on it, d depending on who you play with. Yeah. Legit. Every universe works differently, dude. Yeah. I do like that about it, though. I am definitely on the, like, in the camp that's like, okay, yeah, we're, like, th the rules are more of a suggestion than rules. Noodle, this is the second right. time in a row you've gotten poisoned. I need you to calm down. But, yeah, like... Uh, the thing that I, so I know a lot of people disagree with this, but I am in the camp that says games are supposed to be fun, uh, even when you're playing them in a more serious setting. Flavor and rule of pool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm the guy that plays Smash with items on, but, uh, uh, yeah, dude, I Smash with items on. Like, uh... But one of the, the like, the last big campaign that it wasn't just a one-shot that I did, uh, I talked to the DM and I was like, hey, so I know my strength stat with the way it is, it, it is going to go, I think 21 is supposed to be the limit. Uh, yeah. I know eventually that, like that. that stat is going to go over that limit. Uh, is it okay if I make my dexterity really bad so I'm not going to hit anything anyway? <laughs> Uh, like, I went below what it's supposed to be, uh, for, for Dex, because I was like, it would be really funny if I had a character who's really good at a lot of shit, if he can manage to do it. <laughs> uh, and he, and he was like, yes, that is fine, that sounds great. Oh, hi, Ronnie. But, uh, that sounds great. Ronnie's in the chat, by the way. Hi, um, Uh... And we had uh, a rules lawyer in the game. He was like, you can't do that. Because I, I, the way he figured out, what he specifically, he figured out what my attack stat was. Not attack stat, wow. I'm playing Pokemon. What my strength stat was is I did something like really impressive for my level. Uh, and he was like, wait, what's your strength stat? And I told him, he was like, you can't do that. And I was like, no, Lightline said it was okay. <laughs> yeah, um... I can't remember what I was gonna say. Uh, yeah. I had something, but it's gone. Yeah. Uh, basically, just uh, strengthening the point we're making is like how I feel is uh, beyond anything, the DM makes the rules. If he says yes, if he or she says yes or no, that's really the only thing that matters. Yeah, yeah, legit. Uh, if. Cool. Uh, or if the DM says it's cool, then it's it's cool beans. Yeah. Um. I. 
Oh, I only rules lawyer if it's something that's like, I'm not trying to correct the DM, I'm just like, if the DM needs any assistance that's when i try to no yeah and that that makes perfect sense uh uh i've like i've i have very limited experience with dming but i've done it before and I, i've like gone to player uh like if we didn't have a book on hand i'd go to players who i knew were more knowledgeable and i was like is this how this works because like yeah. i i have no problem uh i actually prefer to uh to homebrew stuff, but I'm not gonna just make shit up on the fly, because that's just not fair. I... I know a couple DMs who just straight up make shit up on the fly. That's... Some of them, it works for them. Yeah. I, I think I think it's fine if people do it. I just know for me, I'm going to forget the shit that I made up, and uh, then things will start yeah. working differently for different players, and uh, I personally am not okay with doing that to people. Uh, what I really like doing is I like to almost rewrite a pre-made module. Yeah. Because uh, I don't rewrite it, but like I put my own twist on it so that I know the material. That, and that yeah. It's like it's very me, you know. That uh, that makes a lot of sense because like. If, for example, I don't know, uh, someone takes a telepathic orb and convinces people that their god is wrong, uh, you know what to do about that. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> especially if you found out that, like, their entire village is based or built upon their god's rotting corpse. I, I did find that out, actually, which is why I was able to make that work. <laughs> I... I had n no idea if you were actually going to go with that or not. I, I, there was a lot of hope going into that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I remember, because we, we did that, like, voice chat or whatever, and, like, I saw your face, and I was like, I think I did something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Like, you watched the gears fire. And <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, shit, what's he doing? Well, I was, exci I was excited because, like, I knew you weren't preparing for me to do that because of, the, like, the look you had on your face, and, like, I, I could see the, like, okay, so what do I do now? <laughs> hmm? I, I could see, the quick, yeah. Like, oh, shit. I, I do love the improvisation aspect of D&D &D as well. I do, too. Like, the shit that you can't come up with on your own. I might- I, I feel like I have told you about this, because it's my favorite D&D &D story. Uh... Did I tell you about the time that I- uh, me and a friend accidentally stumbled into the final boss? I think I did, because it was- it was the thing that wound up with a crater. The thing with the- did, but go ahead and feel free to share it again. Uh, so... Uh... One of the characters had gone missing, uh, so uh, we knew like exactly where they were when they went missing because they were in a hospital room. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So we went to the room and we started just like looking around, uh, and while we were searching, uh, the other character, I forget how, but they figured out that the wall was hollow. Uh, so we we literally did like the like. Uh, the stereotype thing of like pushing on like bricks in the wall to see if one of them would put what had any give to it and One of the bricks yeah, yeah, yeah. slid into the wall and a door opened and we were like, yeah, he's probably in there <laughs> uh, And the final boss was in there <laughs> Like just under the hospital But uh So we go in uh and we basically find like uh like the boss like talking over his minions uh like that one dude uh does to the new order in uh star wars 7 uh in general uh, Hux. yeah 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 uh like at least in my head like that's what i saw <laughs> that was like and like there was like a bridge going yeah, over yeah. uh and, like, there was this, like, moat of, like, 
evil stuff, like basically around him. Uh, and he had like tied up our friend next to him. Uh, we were trying to be stealthy. My character had a super low deck stat, like I mentioned earlier, so I wasn't stealthy, and they saw us. Uh, so, Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and the character that was helping me uh, was an archer. So what uh, the character was female, and what she did is, yeah, exactly, an evil stuff. Uh, she uh, tied tied a rope to her arrow, shot it over, and like Ninja Turtle style, zip lined on her bow to the other side. Uh, huh? And I was like, oh, I've got a good strength stat. I should be able to just hold on to my mace and do the same thing. And I get it because of my strength deck stat. I got halfway across. Fell off the thing, uh, basically like, uh, no, how, how the DM described it is, I put my mace over, jumped off, tripped over the side, uh, the side of the bridge and fell into the pool of evil. Uh, what? so, my character, oh, no. who, because he was a priest, was lawful good, uh, started hearing, like, evil voices, uh, so, that is where the session ended, so, uh, and for the next week. I was, uh, I was preparing for the, uh, I was pre basically preparing a new character because I was like, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> uh, right, right. Like, what do you do about that? Yeah, you know, the, yeah. Um, no character time. Yeah, so, uh, uh, that's the, uh, the character I was telling you about, the, like, uh, slime tamer, that's where the idea for that came from. Uh, because I was like, fuck, man, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the slime tamer that I mentioned to you, like, I think a week ago, uh, that's where that idea yeah, came yeah. from. Uh, cause I was like, I need a new character, I want it to be cool. I have an idea! Uh, so while I was getting that ready, uh, so I, I had that ready, and I was like, okay, so this is probably the, this fight's probably gonna be the only thing I do for the rest of this session, but I, I wanna show up anyway and try. I don't wanna just give up on this character. Um, and while I was looking through my shit, I was like, there's, maybe there's something I can do. Uh, I noticed that I had a scroll of summon angel. So I was, uh, right, right. and the as, angel a, yeah, and as I was planning this out loud, the DM was like, hey, just so you know, because this is something your character would know as a priest, uh, uh, something you should know is that angel, this angel might not help you. Uh, he might just be like, cool, you summoned me. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, because when, when, yeah. you when you summon one, they're just there now. Uh, so I basically was like, okay, I know that the angels are typically good. So what I'm going to, uh, because as I was in the pool of evil, uh, I was, my character was basically having their alignment changed for them, slowly go turning more evil and evil. And the DM told us later that uh, if I had failed to get uh, Torin out of that pool, that he was... Uh, gonna become an enemy that showed up later in the, uh, the campaign. Uh... Oh, that would've been sick, though. Oh, yeah, like, as soon as he told me that, I was like, Man, I'm kinda sad I won! But, uh... What, uh... I opened the scroll and basically was, like, telling the angel as I was summoning it, like, Hey, listen. I, I know what you're capable of, and I want you to know that, like, I, I, uh, am being told by a very convincing force to go against you, and I'm specifically trying to save my goodness. I'm trying to summon you specifically for that. Please help me. I'm trying to do the right thing here. And it worked. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, it basically That's went cool, into uh, into cutscene mode. Yeah, yeah, basically that. it went into cutscene mode, and me and the angel uh, like lifted uh lifted out of the pool of evil in, in like a beam of light uh and because it was cutscene mode i was like fuck it i used the sky's self on myself uh, like uh it was like the sky's item or something like that on myself to make myself look bigger and spikier because i was a dragonborn uh because yeah. fuck it <laughs> uh, she was like dragging a dragon out of a pool yeah nah dragon dragon but uh but yeah, and then basically next thing we knew, we woke up in a crater that used to be the city we were underneath. And everyone was alive, but they were really confused.
Uh, oh, uh, something I forgot to mention before is he, he did mention that, like, everyone who had done an evil thing recently, even if it was something as simple as a kid stealing a candy bar, is dead now. Oh, shit. Yeah, but that also means that the final boss was dead. So basically, anything oh. that wasn't totally, like, aligned with good died. Huh? Yeah, so, like, it, it took that victory and was like, yeah, but it might not have been the right thing to do. Yeah, like, it it came with, it didn't come with the cost. Yeah, which I love that shit. <laughs> I, like, uh, even, even though I think the idea of the anti-hero, uh, is something that's overdone, I really like the idea of a good person doing something that is very questionable. Yeah, because the odds are like, it's either do this or die. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so I've been getting, I've, I've been getting into Doctor Who lately. Uh, this is related, I promise. Uh, <laughs> so I've been getting into Doctor Who lately, and a lot of the best writers for that series, uh, will portray the Doctor as, like, uh, morally ambiguous. Like, uh, yeah. in the Tenant era, which is where I'm starting, uh, there's a character who basically, like, ridicules him for using the TARDIS the way he does. He's like, no one should have the amount of power- but She goes on this whole tirade about, like, no one should have the power that you do, and you're kind of abusing it sometimes. And he looks her in the eye and says, tough. And that's all he Isn't says to it. the Waters of Mars episode? I think so, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be real, that speech yeah. is the only thing I remember from it, but I was like, oh my fucking god! <laughs> Yeah, it was one of those scenes, but, uh, I mean, do you remember the ending of that one? I don't, I, I, it's, uh, I've been getting into it, but I also haven't been, like, binge-watching it. I've been, like, ca catching an episode where I have time. So I don't, I don't remember a whole lot. You, Go ahead and, like, uh, remind me. It? Uh, I, I, I'm, uh, Go ahead and, like, uh, remind me. Spoilers for the Tenant era, it's okay. been over 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, he ends up saving everybody, even though it was a fixed point in time. Yeah. So, uh, the captain, I don't remember why, it was the same woman that, like, talked to him about how he uses the TARDIS. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was like, no, time is sacred, you're, you fucked up. And gotcha. now I'm going to correct this. And she went into her house and shot herself. Gotcha. That is like... Yeah, I, I do remember that now. Uh, I, I do... So... Off topic completely. But uh, I, I do love how that series handles time travel. Uh, with like fixed points. Mm -hmm. uh, because like... I, I think the first question anyone ever asks when they're getting into Doctor Who is like... Okay, but like why doesn't he just go back and fix the, the issue with there not being any more Time Lords. Why doesn't he just go fix that? And it's like, that that event is a fixed point in time. He can't. And even if he could, it would probably happen again. Right. It would just be like untangling headphones just to put them back in your pocket. That is the funniest way to put that, yeah. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, right. No, yeah, you're good. What is... What is on topic? I mean... Yeah... Staying on topic while grinding in Pokemon is... The worst idea. <laughs> How's Noodle doing? Because I haven't been paying attention for a minute. He's poisoned. Cool.
Uh, okay, yeah, go heal Noodle. Actually, I'll just use the antidote. Because we're not going to need an antidote for a minute, probably. I was going to use a potion on him, but it that makes less sense. Because we're, we're going to want potions for Mount Moon. Kill him again. What am I doing? Okay. Actually, while we're waiting for him, I'm going to make sure I got all this. Because I don't think, other than the amber, I don't think there's... Which I can't get right now. I don't think there's anything else in here.
All right, noodles. Uh, noodles having issues. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck around for a bit and not fight anything, because uh, I'm gonna wait for Ryan to get back before uh, Noodle evolves. around for a bit. Make sure that there's not any hidden items in this flower bed. I am back. Hey! I was actually just fucking around and waiting on you. Uh, so how, how was the bathroom? Uh, uh, the bathroom was very exquisite. Uh, it had a butler who, he touched my butt. I, th I thought it was weird. Wait, isn't it in the name though? He was in that yeah, 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 it's a butler, you know. Yeah. So, Noodle is, uh, actually, like, super-duper close to evolving. Like, probably a battle or two. But, uh, on the, uh, the, while we wait for that to happen... Oh, fucking... Sh this shit, Lord. You see the shit, Lord? Well, 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 you son of a bitch. No, yeah. So, uh, actually, in this specific run-through, uh, Pikachu is an asshole. So, uh, Pikachu had, uh, only shows up in a couple areas, and this is the only early game area where it shows up. And it has a 5% encounter rate here. Uh, so, I, as we were, like, coming into this area, I was talking to Ethan, I was like, so, there's a 5% chance of us running into Pikachu, we probably won't, but I'm kind of hoping it, we do, because electric types are really good to have, especially early game, uh, it's just a really good, like, strong type that in uh, gels well with other types. Uh, and yeah. Pikachu wasn't the first encounter we had. It was the second. So I was upset. <laughs> it showed up specifically so we could not catch it. <laughs> yeah. So Pikachu's an asshole. Specifically after the roll. It, basically, yeah. It's like, oh, hey, you wanted me to show up? You wanted to see me? Yeah? Fuck you. Fuck you, Pikachu. Fuck you and your rare electric type ass. Also, uh, this is before they made it say its name in the games, which is a decision that I wholeheartedly disagree with. Because in the games, you want him to say his name? yeah. So outside of outside of the anime that specifically the anime that has Ash Ketchum in it, Pokemon don't say their names. They make animal noises because they're fucking animals. Uh, and uh, them saying their names is a decision that specifically that version of the anime made. Because later on, uh, the Pokemon Pokemon in the anime were we're going to learn speech. Uh, and, like, that, uh, Pika Ash's Pikachu is going to learn how to talk, similar to how Meowth did. Uh, and then they abandoned that idea, and now Pokemon in the anime just say their names. And it's really weird. Honestly, the Egyptians did the same thing with the cats. They were like, what's your name? Mao. Oh, cool. This dude's name is Mao. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's my rant about why I don't like uh, Pokemon saying their names outside of that very specific version of the anime because they don't normally. They usually like the deeper cut stuff. Usually, just has them making animal sounds. Like even in other versions of the anime, like in Pokemon Generations and stuff, like they just like yell at each other. See, that, 
knowing that, I like that was something I was confused about when I was younger, and I yeah. just like never thought about it again. Probably no, like, yeah. What the hell are they making unintelligible screeches in the game? But on the show, they're like, Pika, Pika. Well, I always assumed it was uh, for the same reason why Ben says his alien names in the Alien Force era in marketing, so that you know what they they're called. I always assumed it was that, and it probably is to an extent. Uh, but, like, I don't know. I think it's a really dumb idea that makes Pokemon a lot harder to take seriously, and is why most people who are into it diss on it so hard. <laughs> I, I think, honestly, it's, it's a dumb decision that creates a barrier to entry for the series for a lot of people. <laughs> And you, you can tell it's not an idea they're too attached to because that's the that is the only part of the canon uh, where it happens. Ronnie's making fun of me in the chat. <laughs> in fairness, Ronnie makes fun of everything. That's true. Also, this is happening now. We have. In this region, what is probably the most useful bug type. Ronic, if you're not a coward, send Travis nudes. Ha! Uh, but yeah, we, we have a butter... As Ronnie said, we have a butter doodle now. Yeah. And... Butter noodle. Along with the evolution in Raisin stats, it also becomes a fake psychic type. Because while it doesn't have the psychic typing, it knows confusion now. And specifically in Kanto, and to an extent the other regions as well, Psychic is the most useful type to have. Because in this region it has, like as far as like resistance wise, it has like no counters other than Ghost. Because there's no Dark types in this region. Uh, there, There's only a couple Steel types. It's resisted by Ghost, but like... Uh, so it's res so, uh, so ghost beats psychic, but ghost does not resist psychic type attacks. Uh, and the only ghost types in this region are part poison, which is weak to psychic. <laughs> so ha having a fake psychic type is really good, especially for a nuzlocke where psychic types are not uh, guaranteed. So I think we're ready to deal with shit up here now. So I've already cleared out these two trainers. And I'm pretty sure you're going to recognize what this guy says. So I'll have you read it. Hi! I like shorts! They're delightfully comfy and easy to wear! Let's fight about it! Who, who the fuck goes up to someone and says, Hi, I like shorts. Who fights about it? Like, normally, like, they'll say something like, Oh, you've got Pokeballs, so let's, let's fight to see who's better or something like that. Or like, hey, I remember you, let's fight again. Something like that. Something that, like, makes sense to say before, you know, a, a, a battle to see who's best. Why do you say that? <laughs> Yeah, th this guy specifically uh, is very, uh, this guy specifically is very famous in, in the Pokemon community for that reason. There's also the one chick from either, I think it's both Sun and Moon, uh, where she's like in a bikini and she says, don't ask where I hid my Pokeball. No, yeah, <laughs> I love her. She's great. Like, ma'am, do I need to wash my hands right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember the, the specific swimmer you're talking about, yeah. The swimmers in that game are, like, really attractive for no reason. Like... <laughs> also, like, yeah, the hikers... Like, weirdly big boob, big ass type of key. Yeah, and, like, the dudes have, like, like the right amount of scruff, you know? Yeah, 
Also, the, uh... Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. Hmm? Oh, I thought you said hold on. But, uh... Mm -mm. The, uh... The hikers, too. In most games, the hiker archetype is, like, a really fat dude. Like, like a mountain man, you know? Uh... Yeah, and yeah. In, in Sun and Moon, they're, like, really attractive potheads. <laughs> Dude, so was the fucking the teacher, professor, whatever guy. Oh, the uh, you mean the the teacher from the Pokemon school? Or or uh, Professor Kukui or whatever. Yeah, Kukui. Yeah, <laughs> with his like op uh, shirtless wearing the jacket. Right, like, oh, uh, hold on, is this a Pokemon game or do I need to get Stevie? <laughs> I think it's really funny that, uh, do you, so do you know the reason why he's fit? Mm -hmm. So, uh, each Pokemon professor in each region has their, like, specialty, their thing that they study. And he studies Pokemon moves. And the way that he studies, uh, is he has his Pokemon attack him. And over the course of just taking that many hits, he just eventually got ripped. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, because they like these things shoot actual lasers and break mountains. Like, <laughs> fucking punch him in the gut. It's fucking steel. No. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, we killed the one trainer that I'm worried about until we get to the next gym leader, which is the whole reason why I was uh, training. Oh, fuck yeah. I I, I was really because he, uh, his Ekans is what ended the last Nuzlocke I did <laughs> on Leaf Green. Oh, fuck. Yeah, he, he's no joke. And Unless, uh, again, unless you're prepared for him, just like any fight. Because the only real difficulty that uh, comes from Pokemon is knowing, uh, uh, is the ability to plan around what you're about to go up against. Like yeah, honestly, like, uh, if I die, will I restart? Uh, that's from chat. Uh, so what some people do and what I might do is if we have extra Pokemon in the PC, which we don't right now, uh, uh, if we wipe, I might just, uh, like, raise up a new team and go from there, uh, specifically because I do want to do a recap episode, uh, on my main channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but... I don't know, but, uh, what I was saying is, uh, like, uh, w w it's the same with most RPGs, but the difficulty in this game comes around, uh, even if you don't know what's coming up, the ability to, re uh, react to most situations, building a well-rounded team that, uh, like, oh, I ran into this ghost-type trainer and I wasn't ready for that, but hey, I've got this, uh, dark-type that can handle ghost-types, so I'll send him out. He's got a fatter cock. Got a nicer cock. Eight out of ten. I can't do Patrick Warburton, sadly. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Right. Hey, Peter. Poison So I didn't watch. I didn't watch that movie until like right before. It, it, it had its resurgence in popularity, but oh my god, did I miss out as a kid? Oh man, it was it was one of my absolute favorite movies as a child. Of all the Disney movies, I think it has the best art style. Like out of all of them. That is a very bold statement. It is, I but it it doesn't. I will one hundred percent rebuttal with Atlantis. I get it, uh, I get why, but I disagree. <laughs> I really like, uh, Not like, how- Just because it's 8,000 years old city. No, yeah, I, I think, uh, specifically Atlantis probably is, like, the place in that movie is probably prettier. But, like, I don't know, like, uh, I think they- they went super blocky with it without going the same route that a lot of other blocky shows go go in. Uh, like they allowed for uh, for softer edges in places, uh, and I think 
color wise also like a lot of the colors uh, are very contrasting mm-hmm. uh, um. and I think that it, it makes things pop more it, 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 it catches your eye a lot more especially the scene where Cusco is uh, running from the Panthers oh absolutely where they like break into almost like kind of an artsy yeah like the uh, background's red and the Panthers are like this like void black with these harsh white outlines oh my god they always terrified me as a child too I I probably would have been the same way yeah Um, in that scene I was just like whoa this looks really good (laughs) because you know I was a 22 year old male of the movies of that era Atlantis had the best in terms of uh uh, of effect, you know. Like yeah. The bright white, uh, the like blood almost effect. Uh, yeah. They used a lot of like really intelligent moves. You yeah. Know? I I'm really sad that they've gone to 3D. Like just Disney I... in general. I think it worked for Tangled. I think they should. But yeah. I think it I worked think they for. Use both styles interchangeably. Yes, ex- yeah, because again, it worked for Tangled, but I've always thought Frozen would have looked better 2D. Like as someone who like unironically likes Frozen, that movie should have been uh, hand drawn. Mm. Like I think uh, there's a lot of stuff. That, like think about Olaf. Now think about him as a 2D character. It works way more. And like, uh, uh, like Marshmallow, the like bigger ice monster, uh, I think, I think, uh, both cuteness and scariness wise, he would have been way more effective as a 2D monster where they could change his proportions more. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, one where, like, the uh, 3D images are almost like you can't manipulate them the old way that, you know, for animation. Yeah. You can't do the in-between ones. Y- yes. Uh, uh, in, uh, Disney does work around that. They still, like, add a bit of squash and stretch and, and stuff. But it is a lot harder to do for 3D. Uh, in the, the only scene where I would, uh, where I think... Uh, the 3D works more than 2D, specifically for Frozen, is, uh, is the part of Let It Go where she's building the castle. Like, that scene looks great. It could only have been done like that in 3D, like, at all, with, like, the moving camera angles and stuff. But outside of that, Honestly, everything else... if would... they did it in 3D, they would have still kept that. Or they, if they did... Yeah, they would have had, like, a 3D environment, like the, uh, the ballroom dance in Beauty and the Beast. In Aladdin, when they were escaping the cave, that's also a, yeah. a 3D render. Yeah. Aladdin was actually the first time Disney ever did that. Yeah, they and they, like, went for it, too. They had the tiger's mouth. They yeah, and, the, it, like, that tiger, scene like, still holds TV. up because it, they worked within their art style. Uh, the uh, cave escape sequence kind of ages quite a bit, but... I, I, was, I, I meant specifically, fine. like, the, the mouth. The, the like I meant like the, like the face of the Cave of Wonders looks really good. Oh yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Still looks real good uh, today too. Like yeah. I haven't watched Aladdin in a minute, but I like I can see it perfectly in my mind. Yeah. Uh, I I which granted I think uh, this is speculation uh, because I try to know a lot about art, but I am not an artist. Uh, but uh. I think maybe what makes that uh, the 3D work so well for the opening to the Cave of Wonders is the fact that it's supposed to be scary, so the fact that it doesn't fit makes it more jarring. It has that, like, whoa factor to it. Does the rules allow... uh, So, 
uh, this is off topic, but Ronnie asks, uh, do the rules allow, uh, allow you to rename evolved characters? So, unless it's something that's pre-planned, I don't like renaming characters in Nuzlocke because of the emotional attachment thing, but that's just me. Well, honestly, I think the renaming kind of means, like, double attachment. You know what I mean? No, yeah, and I think, uh... I think uh, it's situ I think that's situational. And keep in mind, Nuzlocke rules are completely subjective. They there is no objectivity to it. Uh, it is a challenge that is put in place to make the game more fun. So if someone wants to uh, disagrees with like that take and wants to do something else, uh, like that's perfectly fine. And also, uh, I like who's stopping them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, um. And actually, so it's not from a Nuzlocke, but my favorite example of uh, of renaming a character, uh, uh, renaming a Pokemon as they evolve, was done by the Completionist. He caught a uh, a Dratini and named him Bustamove. Uh, and when he named yeah. and when he uh, evolved him into a Dragonair, he changed the name to Bust a Nut. Uh, and then when he evolved it into a Dragonite, he finally changed it to Busta Rhymes. And every time he threw uh, threw it out, the editor added in a song from uh, from Busta Rhyme. That's funny. No, yeah, it, it, it worked perfectly, and it was planned from the beginning. And there was a short period in time where, uh, while the Dragonair was a Dragonair, uh, so in their... Uh, on on each thumbnail, it was art of Gerard and Alex, the other beard bro, uh, uh, holding their Pokemon. Uh, and there was a bit where it was uh, Gerard holding Dragonair, and his ha hat, uh, it, the Dragonair had a hat that said nut on it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Honestly... Uh, you could probably rename the Butterfree to Buttered Nude now. Buttered Nude? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie brought that up earlier and I thought about it. Changing it to Butter Noodle. That'd be funny. Yeah. That'd, be, that'd be good. So, uh, I didn't explain Instant Noodle's name to you. So the reason why I think her? It, my, that po Pokemon is a boy. I checked that earlier and I came to the same conclusion. But, uh... So his name came from, uh, Ethan was like, name it Instagram, and I was like, that's stupid, I have an idea. <laughs> so without telling him, I made it, uh, Instant Noodle, uh, and he, uh, he was like, I thought you were gonna make it Instant Nude, this is way better than that. Uh, so, uh, I, I think it'd be cool, cause, because, uh, the name was supposed to be going against the idea of Instagram, to so just get rid of the Insta2, once we get to the name raider. That, just make be, it butter. That, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, it'll be a minute before we, uh, we get to the name raider, and we can change names, but as soon as we get there, that's what I'll do. Oh, yeah. We've got at least one gym between, uh, here and then, though. Excuse me. All right, get rid of this bug catcher. I don't remember him ever being a problem ever, so. Oh, so this ne so the route we're on right now has grass that we haven't gone in yet. And we have a choice. So, uh, directly, almost directly to the north of where we're at now, uh, there's a Pokemon Center. And inside of it, oh, Ronnie uh, suggested Insta-Death for Insta Noodle's new name. But, uh... <laughs> Uh, so there's a salesman that will sell us a Magikarp for 500 bucks, which we absolutely have. Uh, and Magikarp, and Ma a Magikarp, as long as it doesn't die, is a guaranteed Gyarados. Uh, we just have to grind it up for a bit. Uh, or we could, uh, we could chance it in the grass and we will have a 5% chance of getting a Jigglypuff, which evolves into Wigglytuff, which is a pretty... A pretty tough normal type, and normal types are, uh, even though they normal type doesn't beat anything, they're typically pretty powerful, and Wigglytuff is really good at taking hits. 
So do you want to chance the five percent? What was that? Go for the grass so that uh, you can name your wiggly stuff pretty tough. All right. So what I was gonna what I was gonna say that's a that's a great name by the way. Uh, also, uh, the name that I have my phone call me is the one above all, comma Wigglytuff. But uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. So that Jigglypuff only has a five percent chance of being encountered, though. Uh, so that's the only like disclaimer. But there are other Pokemon in there that are pretty uh, decent to have as well. Hmm. Because, like, uh, there's also, uh, there's, uh, the, both of the Nidoran lines, which evolve in, both evolve into, like, uh, pretty strong Pokemon. And there's, uh, there's Spiro, which evolves into a flying type called Firo, which is, that's not a great Pokemon, uh, however, it's good to knock it off the list for Dupes Claws. And there are other places ahead where we can uh, basically have a guaranteed Magikarp. I was just, I wanted to present you with that choice. Because it's all on the same route, so we do have to go with one or the other. Okay. So, yeah, definitely go for the grass. Okay. I mean, unless you really want a Gyarados. Uh, I'm not super attached to it. Uh, I... Like I said, there, uh, we can get another one later, before we need a water type. Poison powder, okay. New move time. Uh, so poison powder doesn't do any damage, but it's uh, guaranteed to cause poison. Uh, uh, poison takes, uh, takes away one-eighth of a Pokemon's HP at the end of every turn. Uh, I'll get rid of... So... What we have is Tackle, which is Tackle, uh, String Shot, which lowers speed, uh, Harden, which raises our defense, and Confusion, which we're not getting rid of. Uh, I think, usefulness-wise, String Shot is the lowest, uh, just because, um, like, look, even though speed is really important, if we, for some reason, need our Butterfree to take hits, that's a good option to have. Tackle is good for getting rid of Cannon Fodder, and Confusion is literally the best move we have, period, right now. So I think I'll go with getting rid of... Because Poison Powder, it's not the best status move. Uh, Slate Powder is the best status move. But, yeah. Ronnie said words are happening. She understood all of that. Words are happening, Ronnie. Anytime I say some nerdy shit to her that she doesn't understand, that's what she says. Just, those were some words right there. A very astute observation. Yes. So. I was really hoping she wasn't going to look at us. Hmm? She looked at us, walked up to us, then stopped and said, Eek, did you touch me? Ah, did you touch me? Even though I came up to you and touched you? Ah, did you touch me? <laughs> so this, this, this sucks. Uh, this thing absolutely knows Sing. Sing only has a 50-50% chance of actually landing, but it will put us to sleep, so I'm poisoning it now, so it at least takes some damage. And that's even more annoying. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can pass away real quick. Yes, confuse you. Take as much damage as possible. Do it. Fuck you. You missed anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> Die. Go to hell. Confused and poison. Fuck. No, yeah, confused and poison is uh, the second meanest thing you can do to the AI. What's even meaner is uh, is confusing them and burning them. Because burn does the same amount of damage, but it halves their attack stat. So if they're using a physical attack, uh, they'll do less damage. Damn. Yeah. 
Poison is honestly only bad for us because, uh, so this is something that they wound up getting rid of in later generations. Uh, so you never had to deal with this, but in this game, Poison, uh, continues doing damage outside of battle until you heal it. So, like, every couple of steps you take, uh, if we were poisoned, you'd see this screen shake, and that would signify our Pokemon taking damage. Which is very bad for a Nuzlocke. So, I'm, I am gonna heal before we go to the grass, by the way. Just, just in case. But, yeah, that, uh, bald dude in the white shirt over there is the, the Magikarp salesman. To the grass we go. Wait, before we do that, I'm gonna make sure we have balls. <laughs> we do. Okay. Oh, and I I purposefully did not warn you about that, but usually the shorthand for different types of Pokeballs is just balls. Yeah. I wanted to, you to get at least one giggle out of it though. Though. Fuck! It's a Fuck you! Get out of here! Hey, Ryan, we have death fodder in case we need it. Aw, oh, man. Time to die. No, I'm not gonna kill it, because I do want to take it off the list. But, uh... Yeah. Uh, so the reason I poisoned it is because, uh... Causing status uh, ailments makes it easier to catch stuff. Hmm. With the biggest one being sleep, for obvious reasons. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're gonna sit... Actually, no, you're not gonna... Until we get three more Pokemon that we actually want, uh, you're gonna sit in our party in case we need to kill someone. What are we gonna name our Death Fodder? Hmm. Honestly, I like Fodder as a name. Fodder, gotcha. I've always... So, uh... For some reason, uh... Kanto, which was the first generation, mind you, has a plethora of normal, really boring looking normal fighting types. Uh, not fighting, sorry, normal flying types, with Pidgey being one. Uh, we have a Pidgey. Uh, and I always thought that Spearow just looked like an uh, uglier Pidgey. <laughs> Honestly, you're not wrong. Is, are we? Wait. Oh, yeah, Fodder's Poisons, duh, okay. I was like, wait, why did it, the poison effect happen? Okay, so... Mount Moon, new for... Uh... A new, new area. Uh, I'm gonna call it now. First encounter is gonna be a Zubat. Calling it now. Which I'm actually not that upset about. It was a Geodude! Wow. I'm way more excited about this. This is plenty more useful than a Zubat would be, since we already have a flying type. Yeah, anything that has a pulp is more useful than a Zubat. Actually, that's not entirely true. Uh, Zubat, uh, in its first form, isn't very strong, but once it evolves, it, it gets not an insane amount of power, but it gets uh, some power, uh, and learns a lot of moves that can call it, cause uh, confusion, uh, which is very mm. useful. I'm placing my bets on what's not going to kill this Geodude. Uh, that's definitely not gonna kill it. Yes! Weaken all of the electric types that are on this team. <laughs> uh, I don't think it knows rock throw, so we should be good. I 
I think I think we're good to start throwing stuff at it now. Alright. Nice. Before I force this thing through Mount Moon. Oh, well, first we gotta name it. Uh, Alright, so the obvious name, uh, barring the fact that this is a girl, the obvious name for a literal rock with a face is Dwayne. Uh, and Dwayne Dillon has already been done. <laughs> okay, how about Muddy Buddy? That is so good. <laughs> Thank you. I never would have thought about that. <laughs> if Buddy doesn't fit, Muddy on its own is great. Uh, I think actually I can think I think I can make it fit. If I make it all one word. Yes. Amazing. Sadly, because we're playing this through super legal means, I swear, I, I actually own the cartridge for both versions of this game, so I think this is legal. But uh, we're playing this game through super, super legal means, and I can't trade to get the final form, but we can at least evolve it once. It's super legal. Yeah, super legal. It means better than being legal. Yeah. So I... Nintendo kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. At... I see Nintendo the same way I see Disney. Uh, the creative teams there are amazing, and I have more than an infinite amount of respect for them. Also, here's a Zubat. Uh, which is the other big reason I wanted Confusion, because it uh, it beats Poison. Which me me makes Noodle our Zubat repellent. But, uh, yeah, so uh, the creative teams at Nintendo and Disney are amazing. However, as a business... Both of them can suck me off. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they can both lick my tank. Like, they seem to not have respect for the thing that makes them money. It's so weird. Which, in because both instances, is art. <laughs> Like, uh, like, even the people that work for them, like, uh, Aaron Hansen, Ego Raptor, most well known for being a game grump, uh, he worked for Disney for a period of his life, and he describes that as the worst part point in his life. Oh, I imagine. Like, yeah. I don't know specifically what he went through, but I imagine it couldn't have been great. I remember one YouTube personality, Swoozy, I believe. I've heard of he them, I don't know them very well. a lot. He detailed a lot about Disney, and it was you. Yeah? Mm hmm I mean, I, I imagine with how they treat literally everything else, like... First off, being an animator already sucks. <laughs> like, animation is not a fun process. Um, no, it's literally like, you're building this entire... Thing that people are going to watch and enjoy. Yeah, it, and... it is a it is a passion project, and like to have that be your passion, and like look at Disney and look at all the um, because they've made amazing art. They have, and want to be a part of that, yeah. and then to get shat on for that, and like get given killer hours uh, and an insane amount of crunch uh, to literally make movement out of drawings. Ugh. It's the same with video game designers, too. Yeah, like, so I, from what I've heard uh, and like what's been displayed, I know Nintendo's really good about crunch. Uh, they, they don't put their developers through that much. Um, uh, it, but right. Nintendo specifically towards like how they handle uh, other people interpreting on their art. Like I'm sure you heard about the, uh, the Pokemon and Metroid scandals that happened a few years ago. I still have a copy of Pokemon Uranium sitting in my drive. Uh, I used to. I, the only reason I don't is because I know how easy stuff like that is to get a, get a hold of once it touches the internet. Uh, yeah, that's fair. But, I mean, I, I just haven't seen any Pokemon Uranium floating around since 
the cease and desist. No, yeah, uh, you, you do have to go digging for that. Uh, uh, uranium, in my opinion, is the more egregious example. Because Pokemon, no matter what, is going to make money. Um, uh, so, the only time I think their legal team had a reason is... Funny enough, it's the only time that they've had a good reason to do what they did. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it was a game that said Pokemon, and it gave you, like, weird, creepy flesh versions of actual Pokemon. So, I'm not... So, I actually disagree with how they handled Uranium. However, do you know what AM2R is? Not off the top of my head. So, it stands for another Metroid 2 remake. Uh, Metroid 2 uh, is a game that... It's good. It's really good, actually. It, but it came out on the original Game Boy. So, it's very limited in what it could uh, portray. Because it, 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 it's literally in black and white. Um, because right. the hardware was on. Uh, and... A very, very passionate man, uh, who goes by the name of Dr. M64, uh, wanted to remake it. He spent over a decade of his life, uh, uh, making AM2R, uh, completely for free, uh, and he, uh, basically brought it in parody with the Game Boy remake of Metroid 1. It's ba and AM2R is basically a, uh... A widescreen Game Boy Advance game with better audio. It's such a good fucking game. Uh, and at that point, uh, this came out in, I believe, like 2016, and Metroid had not gotten a new game since 2010, uh, and that also happens to be the only truly bad Metroid game that's come out. <laughs> uh, a lot of people really don't like Metroid Other M. Uh, so people were like, Real, uh, pe so the Metroid fandom was really upset about the fact a that lot we, of people were super burnt out on the series. It was the opposite, actually. Uh, we were begging Nintendo for new content, and they didn't give it to us. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, so M64 releases that, and like day one, it gets taken down by Nintendo. Uh, and people had a fit uh and as it turns out we learned in the next e3 that came out that nintendo was releasing another metroid 2 remake and that's why they took down that one and at, at, at immediately the entire nintendo uh the entire metroid fandom was like oh okay we get it yeah you can do that because <laughs> huh. like everybody was like oh what the uh no exactly like Defending your copyright is fine when you do it when it makes sense. Because, like, this was the first Metroid game that had come out in closer to a decade than not. Uh, uh, so, like, this, there aren't very many Metroid fans. Uh, so, like, they needed as much ability for this game to do well at all if they wanted to bring the series back. Uh, and the game is literally called Samus Returns. Uh, like, they were really banking on people being like, Oh, Metroid's back! Uh, so they had to take down that fan game in order to give as much attention to the new game as possible. So that makes sense. However, with Pokemon, everyone's gonna buy the next generation of Pokemon. I am completely critical of Sword and Shield, and I bought both of them. <laughs> like, you've already got our souls with Pokemon. You don't need to defend it that much. So it was an entirely new game, though. For Metroid. Yes. Uh, in Metroid doesn't get very many new games, uh, which is why now people are super excited about Metroid Dread, because it's the first new game that's not a remake since Other M, which came out in 2010. Hmm. I don't know. I always see companies who, like, shut shit down instead of embracing it. I feel... It could be done better, you know? Yes, I, I do think there's more nuance to it than that's bad. Uh, because, like, if if someone made, uh, tried to profit off of a cartoon where Mickey Mouse is saying fuck uh, three times a day, like, yeah, I would expect Disney to take that down. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, if it were like something like uh, like Toei taking down Dragon Ball Z abridged, that, however, I disagree with. Yeah. Like, there's a difference between yeah, like it's, genuine it's fa loving fan art and people trying to take advantage of your property. Uh, and I think there's nuance to when something should be taken down or not. Also, check out this amazing GBA water animation. Oh, I so uh, when this battle's over, remind me to show you Bullet Seed. Just say the words Bullet Seed to me when this battle ends. Bullet Seed. Bullet seed. Uh, actually, I'll just hit it with Confusion. Confusion should kill it. Because I need to show you a mechanic of this game that's actually really important. <laughs> okay, it should die. Of course it didn't. Okay. Show him. Show him Bullet Seed. Should do it. Okay. So, do you know what a TM is? Yes. It's how they learn their moves. More or less. It's, uh, so, there, there's a lot of Pokemon moves. More, probably more moves than there are actual Pokemon. Uh, and, uh, whereas Pokemon do learn moves naturally, just through level up. Uh, there's a lot of moves that uh, a Pokemon can learn. Like, for example, there are some Pokemon that learn Bullet Seed naturally and others that can only learn it through being taught it by a TM. Uh, right. However, before Generation 5, which is black and white, it came out way after this game, uh, TMs only work once and then they break and that's it. So yeah, people tend to hold on to them. Uh, so if, but if we do need to, uh, a Pokemon to learn either Bullet Seat, like get Grass coverage or get Rock coverage, we can do that. I, I just wanted to show you that that way to make sure you you knew that that's a thing and an option. Yeah. Is there anything in this crater? There are invisible items sometimes. Okay, there's not. I forget if it's this game or in, uh... a crater, it's just a crater. No, yeah. So, uh, it's either this game or Let's Go, but I know there are some of the craters in Mount Moon that, uh... Fuck, that, uh... Like, hide items in them. I was wildly disappointed with Let's Go. I was too! Uh, literally, when it was announced, I was like, fuck that! <laughs> and then I played it anyway. Uh, that way, it could accurately I had, let's go criticize Pikachu, it. Let's go Pikachu, and I literally gave it away. Uh, Ronnie has my copy of Let's Go Eevee because she likes the game, and I'm not going to take that from her. But uh, uh and fuck you for I liking that Ronnie. <laughs> fuck you for having an yes, the Eevee game. But uh, so I I'm not as critical of it as I was initially. I think it is a fun game, and marketing wise, I completely understand wanting to bring over the audience from Go. However, and also, I think the catching mechanic, uh, the way they implemented it, and the way they uh, made it work, so if you catch multiple of the same game, uh, it increases your odds of finding rarer Pokemon and even Shinies, is awesome. I think that is a great way to implement that. Uh, however, I think the amount of content that is not in that game is a mistake. Uh, getting rid of the Safari Zone, I totally agree with, because you've turned the entire game into the Safari Zone. This Safari Zone has been made pointless. But, taking... Yep. Uh, so this is... That is a, uh, a remake of Gen 1, and so is this. Uh, this game added... I, I think it's over 100 new Pokemon to the game. Uh, and added an insane amount of content through uh, seven new islands called the Sevi Islands. Um... That get, allows you to do a whole bunch of shit, like find legendaries, shiny hunt, uh, look for Pokemon that aren't in Kanto, stuff like that. 
uh, and I am critical of this game, but this this is a good remake, and they t they had to have purposefully not included that in Let's Go. Like, you can't just accidentally be like, "Oops, I understand the assignment." Yeah. Um. Also, like in Let's Go, no matter what, you are restricted to the first 151 Pokemon. Why? Yeah. What is the purpose for that? Also, in that game, they don't uh, allow. They completely simplified the combat system. They simplified an already extremely simple combat system. They got rid of abilities. Uh, they and they took away the ability for Pokemon to hold on to items. So literally, all you can do is attack and hope it doesn't miss. Yeah, pretty much. Uh. Also, they completely uh, replaced the effort value system with the candies, which I think having the candies there is a good idea to, uh, for uh, 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 I think the candies are a great idea so that casual players and even more serious players can very easily increase uh, the stats of a Pokemon. However, having that be the only system that uh, alters the stats uh, outside of just basic uh, buffs from leveling up is a huge mistake. Because it takes away the individuality that Pokemon have after a playthrough. <laughs> because the thing that makes uh, Eevees work is... Say I fight a bunch of Pokemon that... Uh, I like unknowingly fight a bunch of Pokemon that give defense Eevees. And then later in the game... Uh, that same Pokemon lives a hit with 1 HP from a hit that normally would have killed them, but now that they have a bunch more defense, they can tank that hit. Like, that is a thing that can only happen with the EV system, so why would you take that away? Simple answer, simplicity. Yes, uh, and I do appreciate the simplicity where it is, but I think... Uh, the oversimplicity even makes the minor, turns the minor infractions into full-out sins. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm in no way defending the game. Yeah. I think it's pretty awful, and I couldn't even, like, play through it. So, uh, as someone who did, uh, do a full playthrough and actually got pretty close to completing the Pokedex in it, like, which I... Partially did that uh, just so I could like accurately speak on the game. Uh, I think it does do a lot right. Um, it's the first Pokemon game that had Pokemon spawning in the overworld, which is insane. Uh, it uh, at least temporarily brought back Pokemon following you outside of battle. Um, so it, it doesn't fail on all fronts, and also like. To date, it's the best-looking Pokemon game uh, in the 3D era, specifically. I think the 2D games look better than the 3D ones in general, but that's just me. Uh, but, like, it, it has a lot going I'm for it. i for Arceus. Arceus? Whatever. Oh, uh, let's go Arceus? Yeah. Uh, th there's no official pronunciation for that Pokemon's name, don't worry. But, uh... Uh... RCS is one of th at least three different official pronunciations. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited for that game. But I'm, like, cautiously excited, if that makes sense. Like, I fully understand that they have every ability. With, with po uh, Game Freak's recent track record, they absolutely have the ability to fuck that game up. And that trailer oh, yeah. didn't look great! <laughs> There are Pokemon that were moving at, like, less than a frame per second. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, like, Pokemon that were just, like, standing still, or, like... Also, or notice there were no Pokemon in the distance. MC. There weren't Pokemon in the distance. There weren't Pokemon, like... Like, uh, a lot of people were critical of, uh, like, the Shanks not reacting to the Pokeball when it was thrown. I'm more upset about the fact that the Shinx weren't playing with each other. If you're going to bring these Pokemon to life, either go all the way or don't. One or the other. Because if you do it and you don't go all the way, it's worse than not doing it at all. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like, why half-ass the project? Go, go full-ass. A half- it, It's the same issue I have with Halo 5. If- If you make a game that has the potential to be great, and then it's not, it's worse than not having that game. Mm. I would love a fully interactive, Breath of the, open world, Breath of the Wild Pokemon game. Which is what that game is, and also it- uh, gives more lore to an already uh, lore-heavy region, which is Senno, and and I am super excited about that. Uh, and lore-wise, I know I'm gonna like that game, uh, like what it brings to the table. But gameplay-wise, I'm uh, it could be bad. It could be so bad, and I'm really worried yeah. about that. It has the it has great potential. Yes, it does, and which is why I'm excited about it. Like uh, I absolutely believe that Game Freak has the talent. Uh, to to make that game great, and honestly, Game Freak isn't the company that I'm worried about. It's uh, the Pokemon Company International. I'm worried that what's going to happen is Game Freak is going to go to TPCI and say, "Hey, we need more time," and Pokemon Company International is going to say, "No, we need to sell toys." Yeah, we need we need money. That's what happened to Sun and Moon, not Sun and Moon, uh, Sword and Shield rather. Sword and Shield. I swear, was set up to be the best Pokemon game, hands down. Uh, and but they needed more time. They needed uh, to be able to finish the game. And the Pokemon Company International said no. And now Sword and Shield is just kind of all right. Well, isn't it being fixed through updates? No, it's being given more content. Uh, in uh, the majority of the Pokedex issue. Uh, has been fixed through update. Has been fixed through uh, free updates. However, the game's issues run deeper than content and update, uh, and uh, than content and uh, uh, Pokemon amounts. Like there, like a lot of like uh, visuals and the, how the Pokemon behave in the overworld, and the fact that uh, the uh, the uh, raids aren't scaled properly difficulty wise so that they're literally impossible on single player uh, if you're doing the hot, harder ones like there that game has issues that run deeper than what a lot of people are talking about um yeah because it wasn't what was marketed uh game freak literally came out and said hey we're not gonna have the full pokedex this time so people only focus on that problem and also the fact that the graphics don't look great, which... Yeah, but that's been the case ever since the Pokemon made the move to 3D. Honestly, the Pokede the full Pokedex not being there is kind of a pretty egregious problem to me, though. But yes, but the thing is... Everyone knew that was going to happen one day. Like, it wasn't even the thing like, Game Freak talked about. It was the thing that everyone just understood. If Eventually, like, we're literally the next generation, which is probably going to come out next year, uh, if not next year, then the year after, will bring us either to or close to 1,000 individual Pokemon species. That is in fucking sane. Uh, eventually, yeah, you're just not going to be able to fit that onto a cartridge. Like, so we all knew, like, that was going to happen one day if this series continues. However, I do think that it did need to happen with uh, Sword and Shield, and that if uh, they had been given more time, it wouldn't have happened at all. However, I do think that this is something that uh, is a cool thing that is born out of something that we shouldn't have to deal with, but it's a cool thing nonetheless. Uh, it Not knowing that we're probably not going to have a full, complete Pokedex at launch, it could be... Uh, could be added through updates uh, to future games. But, like, the next game, even if it eventually has a full Pokedex where you can transfer in old Pokemon, which is basically what past Pokemon games have done, uh, like, mm. Geodude specifically hasn't been in every Pokemon game, but you could trade him up from older regions. Uh, but, um, which is probably what they're going to do in future Pokemon games. But, it does add the idea of, okay, but, like, who's going to be in the next Pokemon game? Which I think is kind of interesting and adds anticipation to the games. 
which is something that they've been sorely lacking ever since everyone figured out what their uh, what their formula was. Like, literally, every time a new Pokemon game comes out, you know what you're going to do is, regardless of if there's gym leaders or not, you're going to defeat the enemy team, probably capture a legendary Pokemon, and then become champion. Uh, part of me actually, so, with the Dexit issue, Dexit is the, uh, the Brexit named, uh, name for the Dex cut. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that, so there, this is a little tinfoil hattie, but, uh, I'm kind of curious if the reason why they came out and said that before the game came out, uh, is so people would focus on that issue and maybe not the other issues that Game Freak knew they didn't have time to fix. Because of the fact that that is something that was in it uh, an inevitability, as opposed to things like graphical yeah. issues or uh, scaling issues. It's like a scapegoat kind of problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I think this problem's way bigger. Because no as people who are working on the games and understand how file storage works, they knew that yeah, eventually we're gonna have to start cutting Pokemon. Like that's not a thing we can avoid. Uh, that's just a thing that, like, technology can only go so far with that. Um, so maybe they won't make fun of our GameCube trees. People call them N64 trees, but that's clearly GameCube level art. Come on. <laughs> no, uh, I gotta be honest, I'm pretty hyped for the Steam Deck. Uh, this, oh, the, uh, the Valve Switch? Yeah, dude. Like, I I've seen the specs. Now, I I, I had my reasonable doubt because like it's mm. it's gotta have a downside. But it's, yeah, power. <laughs> it, it's probably gonna be about as powerful as an Xbox One. Like that's uh, yeah. That's yeah, what I'm expecting. I'd say it's about as it's right there. Um, but like, it's definitely gonna be battery. Too. Yeah, battery, uh, the speakers are probably going to be ass because Nintendo's the only company that knows how to put good speakers on small systems. Uh, Honestly, I'm cool with that. I'll plug in my headphones. Or shit, it might come with a Bluetooth dongle, unlike the uh, Switch. No, yeah, that's uh, uh, very much a possibility. Uh, and so that's not really too much of an egregious sin for me. Yeah. Is um, that, and it's more than likely going to be able to play 95% of the Steam library, which is fucking... Bad. No, yeah, that's, that's like, actual insanity. Uh, I, put, I guarantee it won't go so far as fucking VR, but, like, something close. Well, even, uh, even then, I bet it can, because the Switch can run VR. The Switch can run dual... Uh, don't... <laughs> yes, I know what you mean, but uh, I think Steam being a company that makes... Steam, well, Valve being a company that makes VR, has made VR games, they have more experience in that area and can probably optimize it for that. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Uh, now, if they somehow made the Steam... What is it? The the uh, their version of VR, like the Steam VR, or whatever. Mm -hmm. If they made that compatible with the Steam Deck, I could see that like working really well. No, yeah. Uh, I mean, at that point, you got an Oculus Go with more fucking power. Yeah, and also with them with them selling hardware now, uh, accessories are definitely a thing. And imagine, again, using Nintendo as an example. Imagine something like the VR Labo, but not made out of cardboard, uh, and with usable controllers for it. Where you, you can slide your Steam Deck onto, onto a device that's sitting on your face, and now you can uh, use it for VR. Uh, okay. 
So uh, the only reason I'm saying that is because, uh, again, they're in the hardware space now, so they're going to want to sell more hardware that goes with their existing hardware. Right. I fully understand. It's just like, personally, myself, I hate egregiously that type of VR. The, like, mobile game VR. Yes, yeah. I agree with you, but they're, I, I can see them doing that. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not the product is good, Valve clearly hasn't cared about that for a while. <laughs> you know, I'll give you that one. Uh, you know what I would like? You know what I would like more than anything? For them to be a software developer again? <laughs> I mean, yes. You know, stay in your fucking lane. But no, I want another portal game, damn it. Oh my god, Portal 3! I want it so bad. I want it so bad, and it'll never come out. I don't want a Portal 3. Shell's story in... No, yeah, I don't want it to follow Shell. Story. That's the thing. But there are other... Like, even if it just follows, like, a ro another robot that uh, GLaDOS makes. GLaDOS is still down there, and I want something out of that. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, uh, 100%. And I think they... Uh... When they came out with the whole, like, team testing initiative where you build your own puzzles and everybody tries them out, yeah. I thought that was fucking revolutionary at the time. Yeah, uh, I didn't hear about that. Is it basically Mario Maker for Portal? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know those, like, little stick figures that Aperture sometimes uses in place of people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you play as one of those in oh, that's the Portal cool. Chamber. That's a very cute idea. Uh, it, it's very cute, and like when you shoot the portals, you don't see shell. You see the little like stick figure person. Are you like a two D uh, person walking around in a three D space? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, really cool. Uh, and I mean, some of the puzzles were really difficult too. Like I was on the scene while it was popping, and shit was busting, dude. Uh, yeah. You had a new. Every time you hit refresh, you had a new fucking chamber you could try. And I was like, hell yeah! Uh, Portal 2 was very much my, like, comfort game yeah. when I was a kid. So, uh, this is an idea I literally just had. Uh, but if they were to do a sequel to, uh, to Portal 2 that was an actual, like, at least uses GLaDOS, I think it would be interesting if it played with the idea, because they would obviously want to make the player a human character. At least for the single player. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be very interesting. It, since uh, Portal 2 reveal... Spoilers for a game that's roughly 10 years old. Uh, but it's, Portal 2 yeah, reveals that GLaDOS... It used to be a female named Catherine, I think? Something like that? Um, mm -hmm. And it kind of dives into the idea of like her humanity. Uh, a better version of what 343 has been doing with Master Chief. Um, but, uh, I think it'd be very interesting if they, uh, played with the idea of GLaDOS being lonely. Like, uh, legitimately maybe... missing Shell and being mad about the fact that the player character isn't Shell. That was touched upon. Uh, this is... Of course, this is uh, going into, like, I remember something about that, like, uh, there was something where, I think it was in the cooperative testing in initiative, where uh, she would offhandedly mention that, oh, it's because you guys aren't human, and, uh, but that also means you don't go running around blowing up my facility, something yeah. like that. Uh, where it's not clear if she misses Shell, but yeah. it is clear that she wanted humans. And, I mean, the CTI, it does end with you giving her damn near a fresh batch of humans. So, yeah, then that, yeah, that could, uh, like, if it's already been set up, come on, Valve, just knock it down. They really did it. They the end of that game set up so much to be done, and it's like, dude, 
Oh, hey, this is important, by the way. Come on now, we're waiting. Do you know who this guy is? Uh, sorry, I'm not actually looking at the screen at the moment. Let me pull it up. I should still be screen. We. Uh, I should be uh, still right, be screen sharing. Straight. Oh, is that Team Rocket? Yeah. So yeah, he's kind of important. <laughs> Not him specifically, but what he represents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Team Rocket. Yeah. So, even though they're not completely uh, competent- be... Oh, what was that? Sorry? Oh, I'm gonna be right back. Oh, you're good. I'm just gonna kill this entry real quick. Uh, like... Yeah, rip. You have a rat attack. I have a cheater. Let's rub them together. Rub a dub dub. Dub in the tub. Why? The, why is the dub in the tub? Oh, uh, he had a rat attack, and I have a cheater, so I rubbed them together. Pokemon breeding tactics are getting way out of control, dude. <laughs> uh, Does Hyper Fang have a high crit ratio? I forget. I'll check that real quick. Uh, po Pokemon's cheater summary moves. Oh, it has a chance to make flinch. It's an astoundingly hot day up here. Uh, it, yeah, it's not super cold down here either. Well, yeah, I mean, you're in Texas. Yeah. I actually live in a desert. One of the few that are in the U.S. You, uh, one more time? You I said, out. uh, I said, I, I live, I actually live in a desert. One of the few that are in the U.S. Right. Whew, fuck. So, Indiana weather makes you feel like you're living damn near everywhere. No, yeah. Ten seconds. If it's not droughting, it's humid. Right. <laughs> uh. Oh, suddenly, suddenly it's hailing. What the fuck? Right now? No, I'm. Mean, oh, I thought that was real, and I, I believed it because I've lived in Indiana. Yeah. Uh, to any of you who are watching who have never lived in Indiana, imagine every weather experience known to man, and then put it all in with a 24-hour timeline. I will Welcome say, as someone who's lived in a few places, that's actually a surprisingly common thing. Like, every, almost everyone I've ever met complains about the fact that where they come from experiences this, uh, the seasons of the week. Huh. Yeah. Uh, unless you live in a, like, a desert or, like, a tundra, you probably experience, like, crazy weather. Also, ignore any sounds you may hear coming from my side. Alright. science. Uh, I'll ignore the, the crazy sex that happens. Uh, uh. I'm really happy I have headphones on right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I have a buddy named Cole. 
Uh, yeah. And he and I have... I don't know, it's like an ongoing joke where we talk about how we fucked each other's dads. <laughs> I don't know what got us onto this. I don't know what started it. It just, like... <laughs> And so one day, fuck I each other's moms. <laughs> I <laughs> I grabbed my nuke and I was just struck by this. Uh, I don't suppose you know Norse mythology at all. Uh, bits and pieces. Odin's piss. Uh, yeah, not that part. Okay, I'll I'll let you know about that afterwards. But, uh, I was, I was struck with inspiration, uh, and, like, it, within, like, a frame of five minutes, I had a whole song about how I fucked Cole's dad, and it was awesome. That is great. Okay, look the other way. Okay, so now getting into the Odin's piss. Uh, back when Odin was trying to get, like, up to godhood, and like collecting all his power before he built Asgard, uh, he was trying to woo this giant babe, uh, and she like lived in a cave or whatever, protecting pretty much the best mead ever. Like if you drank this mead, you would be singing songs about it. You would write write a whole novel describing the mead. You would paint a picture. Something like that, right? Gotcha. And so Odin was trying to get his hands on that knee, and the easiest way was through the daughter's legs. Uh, and it got to the point where she was like, yeah, of course I'd let you fuck me. You, you've been softened with me for a while, and, you know... Uh, and so he goes to town on her, and afterward he's like, ugh. I'm so dehydrated. I sure could use a sip of that mead. And she's like, nah, no, 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 we can't. Uh, that, that's some sacred shit. I can't, I can't do that. Gotcha. And so he goes to town on her again. And he's like, damn, oh, I'm so dehydrated. You know, I sure <laughs> could use a sip of that mead. And she's like, you know what? You did me good, like twice. You can have whatever you want. And so he drank all of the mead in one gulp. Gotcha. Pissing off the daughter who screamed for her father, who ran in and saw the situation and was like, what the fuck? Time to die. And Odin was like, what the fuck? Time to fly. He turned into an eagle, uh, a very like bloated eagle. Uh, and like tried to fly and he was getting a good distance away but he was still getting caught up on by the giant. Uh, and so in a last ditch effort, he had to evacuate all of the mead oh. in the fastest way possible. So all over the world, all over Midgard, he pissed away pretty <laughs> much artistic inspiration. Gotcha. <laughs> Wait, and what? So any, like, poet, writer, maker, you know, that gets hit with inspiration, you're being hit with Odin's piss. That is how they explained inspiration. Yeah, I'm sure there's a cultural why. reason why, and I have to know it. <laughs> It's mainly because the Norse didn't really take their gods seriously. They were someone to joke about while they were drinking. Gotcha. Uh. One time Mjolnir was... <coughs> ...stolen by the Frost Giant. How? <coughs> How? <laughs> it's not like what you think, uh... And Marvel, like, Got it's not a fixed point in the universe. It can't. It doesn't have that. Only the worthy can lift me. Gotcha. Uh, it was literally just a hammer that you could throw and it, and call it back to you. And it was originally supposed to be the size of a warhammer. Okay. Uh, but 
because Loki is a fuck, it was uh, shortened to like a hand hammer. That's amazing. Uh, and so, uh, to get his hammer back, they made a deal that they would give Freya, a, a Norse goddess, uh, kind of like similarly mother, but also milf. Uh, but that's that's not really important. Uh, <laughs> the milf isn't important. And so, the milf is not important in this in this story. Uh, so Thor and Loki were like collaborating with each other. And they're like, should we tell Freya that he that the giant wants her? Nah, I got a better idea. And so Loki disguised themselves as uh, as like a handmaiden, and Thor put on a bride's dress. That's great. And they they went to the frost giants, and he was presented as Freya, the Norse god of beauty. That's great. And the the frost giants were looking at Thor like. Dude, I gotta say, this chick is getting me <laughs> They were fucking all about it. Until it came to the feast. To which Thor ate like Thor. Which is to say he ate everything in sight without stopping. That's he great. He was like on his eighth course when the giant whispered to Loki. It was like, is she... Always this hungry? And Loki's like, dude, stop fucking eating. And Thor's like, what is so good? I, th I thought Loki was gonna say, yes, and even hungrier for dick. Uh, essentially, that's what it, uh, what it boils down to. Uh -oh. Until Thor was like, yeah, I'm tired of this. And he rips up the uh, dress and fucking goes to town on these guys. Pretty much calling Mjolnir to him and whack, whack time. Gotcha. <laughs> Norse mythology is some of my absolute favorite stories because they're so goddamn funny. It is really surprising to me that the, uh, the only the worthy can lift it is a thing that the comics made up. That is, because that sounds like such a mythology thing. Right, right. Uh, but maybe that's just totally because I'm a person who was told about King Arthur. I don't know. Uh, I <laughs> will say they got Loki in the comics a bit more accurately than they got Thor. No, I figured that because I... Isn't Thor like a redhead? <laughs> yes. Thor is, uh... And he has, like, glowy really, eyes. He had giant, like, a giant belt that granted him super strength, too. Okay. <coughs> uh, I imagine the super strength is something that they just wanted to give to him innately, though, in the comics, for obvious reasons. Yeah. And his muscles are made of katati fibers or something like that. Excuse me? Uh, uh in... Infinity War, Thor lands on the Guardians of the Galaxy ship. No, yeah. And Gamora's like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the the, the sex jokes. Yeah, the the, the sex jokes. Uh, I don't know. I think Infinity War and Endgame could have been done better, but uh, that's just me. So, I do. So, Infinity War, I will slightly disagree with you. Uh, I think they juggled the amount of plot that is in that movie rather well. Endgame, 100%. Uh, as a huge Hulk fan, I was a little pissed off. I actually really love Smart Hulk. I do too! Like, I, I, so, seeing that, because I had uh, parts of Endgame spoiled for me, I was excited to see Professor Hulk. And then it happened off screen. Yes. Uh, in fact, I saw a deleted scene recently where they they put it together. His, uh, like, where they merge. Uh, and it 
would have been such a good scene to see in the in at least Infinity War or the yes. beginning of Endgame. So I, I I actually think uh, the whole like uh, Hulk saying no is great. I love that. Uh, I I think the canon him. reason why is a little stupid, but it happening at all is cool as shit. And I'm I actually like that he's not basically not in Infinity War at all outside of that first fight. At, but the thing is, the fact that that exists makes Hulk extremely important in Endgame. So you can't just half-ass whatever you do to him, and they half-assed it. Yeah, uh, I feel, I I feel like they kind of took away part of the Hulk story. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like. They they essentially erased the whole personality. Yeah. And that's ninety five of that's ninety five percent of like what he is in the comics. Yeah. It's like there, it's not really known, but like the Hulk is one of many versions of the Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Hulk. recently with the stuff they've been doing with Immortal Hulk. Immortal Hulk, Maestro Hulk. Uh, Joe, no fix it. <laughs> Fucking Planet Smasher Hulk. Yeah, yeah, World Breaker, yeah. Uh, like, the Green Scar. Yes, oh my god. Green That's Scar is my favorite really Hulk, hands area. down. But, uh, like, that's not super important for the movies. But I do. I, I think that for the movie specifically, because they need to be more simple, uh, I think having the two identities works perfectly. Um, but when you only have two identities, you need to make both of them important. And I think that having Professor Hulk basically just be a big Bruce Banner sucks. Yeah, legit. It, it took away some of his... Uh, it literally gave him... You know, his happy ending. It finished the story, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, what? And he's a character that's like, what now? Yeah. I don't have to live with this impending doom. I think it would have been great. And I hope this is something that they explore with the What If series. I think it would have been great if the in Infinity Stones injuring him pissed him off that would oh my God. imagine if right before Th uh other world Th the alternate thanos lands if they have to deal with a beefed up infinity hulk oh my god dude they or could like, basically give him like the, the like the world breaker energy and all that without having to canonize world breaker hulk to that universe Oh my god, dude. That would have been really interesting. And I then, like, they could have had, like, folk, like, uh, the line that he says in the first Incredi in Incredible Hulk, uh, the Edward Norton movie, the line of, I can't control it, I can only steer it, could have been called back to for the Thanos fight. Oh. Bah! See, you should have wrote it. Because I love Hulk! <laughs> and I, I respect that, yes, change... Massive changes have to be made to that ca character uh, to make him work in the MCU. I will always exp uh, respect the fact that changes have to be made for an adaptation. It's an adaptation. Like, that's what it is. It's in the name. But, you have to do it right. And you have to do it with respect. Which, the MCU overall be... is pretty good at, but it fucks up in, like specific areas which is where i think like the fact that both thor movies are super lackluster has a lot to do with that in my opinion well they were like cook cutter as hell i i rewatched the first thor movie just to see if it's as bad as i remember oh yeah so i think the first half of that movie is really good like all the stuff with him in the cafe is really funny uh the <laughs> The line, uh, mad magic is only science that hasn't been explained yet, is super fucking cool. Uh, uh, I really like, like, him trying to sneak into, uh, to the, the shield, uh, 
uh, like the little talk that the uh, or the uh, fob that the that shield sets up to protect Mjolnir. Him fighting his way in there is super cool. Uh, yeah. If only he didn't fight a gray robot at the end. If only, like, I don't know, maybe have Loki show up at the end. And, like, maybe he could, like, talk about how pitiful this world is now that he's finally here or something like that. Uh, like, an eternity spent on Asgard hearing about Midgard and this is what it's like? Something like that to set him up for Avengers, you know. I somewhat disagree. Yeah? And... Uh, mainly because <laughs> within Marvel Loki's character, he is always he always wants to rule as that's his number one priority uh, in all things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he he wouldn't step off of the throne to go toe to toe with Thor because he knows for a fact he'll get his ass beat. So, yes, uh, and I, I, as I was saying that, I was thinking about that, but like, he would bring backup, but him being there is, like, I think important, and he's not. I think it would have been better had he sent Frost John. I don't know, I think he could have, like, like, gone to Heimdall and been like, I need to recover my bro- we need to recover my brother. And then, like, he has ulterior motives of some sort that I'm not smart enough to think of right now. He froze Heimdall, remember? Oh, that's true! Fuck it, just- like... Well, even that, like... I kinda disagree with that because wouldn't it be more mis mischievous for him to lie to him? <laughs> I mean- it would. It would very much be more mischievous. The reason, or at least my reasoning for why he didn't, mm -hmm. is because Heimdall is such a... Uh, he's such an inherently good type character that a lie wouldn't work on him. He's yeah, just all. that's true. But I think... Uh, well, also, I think that... Uh, that gives more... So, yes, uh, I, I agree wholeheartedly with, like, Heimdall can't be lied to, which is why Loki should've. Oh, because, like... Uh -huh, he's, he's the god of mischief, to, yeah! If anyone can, it's him! <laughs> I don't suppose you've seen the Disney Plus Loki show yet. Yes, and I really like it. More than most people do, I think. I love it. Uh, I do too. I liked the beginning. I, I'm one of the few that did. Oh, I loved the beginning. I hate the fact that Loki has a somewhat incestuous relationship with himself. But, yes, know, if it weren't written so well, I would hate it more than I do. <laughs> uh, but Kayla got me a 3D printer for my birthday. Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, it's tight as hell. Uh, I'm gonna, like, print all kinds of miniatures on it, too. Uh, once I get resin for it. But, right. Uh, literally, the first thing I'm gonna print is Alligator Loki. Oh, yeah. I want a plush of that so bad. If Disney doesn't do that, I I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> uh, they have a Disney shop for Loki. Uh, like an official merch store. Oh, really? If there is a Loki... Uh, an alligator looking plush. I, I wonder how long that's gonna last. Oh god, like, I imagine a lot of the stuff sold out. I mean, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, I wonder how long it's gonna be a Loki store. Oh, uh, like, until it becomes. I hope a what if store shows up. Oh, that'd I be cool shit. Gladly get what if stuff. Well, because, like, in New York, there used to be a Pokemon Center, and then eventually Nintendo was like, yeah, this is just a Nintendo store now. Hmm. <laughs> Like, there's, there's a specific floor of it that is still a Pokemon Center, but I think right now, uh, we're back to the only actual Pokemon Center that exists is in Japan. I've seen videos of it. It's so cool. <laughs> I want to go there so bad. I need to hurry up and learn the rest of Japanese so I can just go there and communicate with people. Uh, 
I mean, <laughs> not to be an American, but like, <laughs> English is a second language over there. Yes, but I, for, I, I literally cannot explain why, but I feel very strongly about learning. Like, I want to go to other countries and like, I don't want to finish learning Spanish before I want to go to Spain. But for some reason, I really want to learn Japanese before I go there. I don't know why. Not to say too many, like, personal names on the internet, but yeah. do you remember Rasan at all? R R yes! Oh my god, I forget about him regularly, but yes! Uh... He straight up went to China, knew, like, wrote a book, a comic book, in Chinese. Had, That's... like, an entire multilingual commercial run for both of them, and I'm like, holy shit! So... Okay, so, uh, God, so he's one of those people that, uh, like, you know those people that you think about every now and then, and you're like, I wonder what that person's up to. He is, like, the main person like that for me, where, like, I never think about him, except for when I do. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, uh, that happens, the people from high school. No, yeah, but he, so, uh, when he was conceptualizing, it might be the same uh, property, I don't know. Uh, but he was con conceptualizing a property, and I talked to him about the fact that I want to be a voice actor one day, and he was like, I'll keep you keep in contact with you. Like, I I'm actually trying to work on something. And then we didn't keep in contact. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, we totally have the same frame of mind. It's, it's a shame that we can't maintain conversation. Well, no, because like, he and I got along more, th like, I got along with him more than, like, the rest of my friends at the time did. Uh, but I was like, uh, like, like, I was like, this guy is probably going somewhere if, if he meets the right people. Uh, and apparently he did. Like, I, now knowing that, I'm really happy for him. Yeah, yeah. Dude's, like, straight up living his dream, like D, like D is, too. Yeah? Who's D? D I don't want to say uh, that, but who is that? <laughs> I'll censor it if I have to. Uh, um... I, I can only remember Karami right now. Um, fuck. It's yeah, you and I were thing. like in like you, you're a year older than me, so you might have known more like different people, a different group of people. Oh yeah, he was a senior when I was like a sophomore. Oh yeah, so, so I like um, when I was a freshman, like I did have a few friends who were older than me, but not like that many. Uh, D Parson, I mean. That really? name sounds uh, super familiar. I probably have met them, but I don't like know them. He's a really char charismatic person. Gotcha. Like, he's super fun to talk to. I could uh, have an entire like a day long conversation with the man. Gotcha. Uh, but he's making. He's straight up making comics, web comics. Uh, getting, trying to get his comics syndicated in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. He's fucking good friends with Jim Parsons, who created Go Garfield. That is, so I, I knew Jim Parsons was from, uh, like, I think Kokomo or something like that. But that's cool. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, and, like, they had multiple lunch conversations together. They, like, had entire runs where Garfield crosses over into his comics and uh vice versa it's really nice that's that's He's really cool living his dream though no yeah uh i wish i had jumped on this stuff earlier than i have because i with the ideas that i've had if i just like sat down and did them like after like a year or two i, I think i could find success i just need to do it <laughs> yeah uh, like, uh, the Ben Tanner Bridge, which is something I actually really want to do once I move back to Indiana. I think that's something that, even though the Ben 10 fandom is kind of small, I think a lot of the people in that fandom would appreciate it. It's about finding a good, consistent audience. Yes. Which, with a variety of things I want to do, is going to be difficult, but I think, even though... Quality is a very uh, skeptical thing on the internet, with internet content. I think if you do just provide consistent uh, quality uh, and a similar tone, you can probably still find an audience. It just probably takes longer. I 
I say that as someone who is currently just posting stream VODs on YouTube, but, you know. Uh, I am probably gonna have to get off here in the next... Within the next hour or so. Okay, that's fine. We're just grinding again anyway. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's a guest star filler episode. Yeah. I mean, we, we got to Mount Moon, so, like, that's not small, and we we got two more encounters. Hell yeah. Encounters are kind of, uh, with, uh, with Muddy, we probably just straight up got a new team member there, because Rock is an important role to fill. <laughs> I'll fill your role any day. Uh... He, if he dies, he will roll. He is very circular. <laughs> uh, I should probably put Muddy Buddy up front just to help grind her up. <clears throat> just to grind her up. Yeah. yeah. Cause Mount Moon's not super long, but I want to be prepared for it once we get deeper into the cave and don't want to run all the way back to the Pokemon Center. Do you know the name of, uh, of that comic by chance? Which one? The one that, uh, Rashawn made? Uh, hey. uh, I'm afraid not, but I can look it up real quick. Because I would be super interested I... to check that out. I still have... Is a Twitch channel too? I, I believe it. <laughs> I have a bold opinion that's probably going to be met with hate. Hey, how was that? Twitch is the only fans of dudes. Honestly, it's just an alternate only OnlyFans in general, uh, depending on what kind of content you make. Yeah, uh, oh, uh, Pyzomia. I, I'll, I'll text you the... Oh, the yeah. Cover. Honestly, it looks dope as hell, too. Yeah, I wonder uh, who the artist he got is. I wonder if that's somehow also someone we went to high school with. Uh, not. I'm not going to say her name because she does have a, uh, a stage name, but we went to high school with the person that's going to do the art for this video when it comes out. Oh. Yeah, she, uh, my channel art, the little, like, uh, Weavile that's in my channel profile picture, she did that uh, that art. Oh, man. Well, if she knew me in high school, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she might have. Uh, I'll text you her name real quick to see if you, you remember her. Oh, God. Ties on. That does look cool as shit. Oh, oh my God. I really like that art style. Uh... You might not, because she's younger than I am. Okay. Uh, doesn't ring any bells. Yeah, I, I didn't think it would because... Uh, but yeah, she went to high school with us. That's how I know her. And she's going to do the art for this video when it comes out. I it's... mean, hey, if she did know me in high school, again, terribly <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. You, you are a very different person now. 
There is no redeeming any of me in high school. Oh my god. I will say, I think it, it says a lot that uh, you and I are much closer friends now than we were then. <laughs> You cut out. Uh, what'd you say? Oh, I, I, said, I just said, uh, it does say a lot, I think, about both of us, that you and I weren't super close in high school, and we're, like, honestly kind of close now. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it definitely says a lot. Yeah. Man. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's cool that she's doing the art for the... For the channel, uh, yeah. what's, what's the YouTube channel? Uh, it's... I'll text it to you. It's hard. <laughs> like, I know how to say it, but, uh, I understand that not a lot of people know how to spell it. But it's, uh, Savart the Lore Master Farmer. Yeah, I know how to spell that. I... Put T instead of V because I'm an asshole, but you know. I'm sure you could change that at some point. No, I, I meant like when I texted it to you on the actual on YouTube. It's just that I don't imagine you'll find it because there's literally no content on it. But yeah, no, I'm only getting the lore master stuff. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. Uh. Honestly, with the way production for this video is going, since it's happening at all, it'll probably be the first one that goes up. If not, there's a Halo video that I'm working on that uh, could also go up first. Oh man, so we should give them like really snappy phrases to put at the at the at the front. Oh so yeah. Have, people have to tune in to why we should to the whole conversation. Oh man, look at this bell sprout! What what a noodle-like body, wacky noodles. Catchphrase. Wacky noodle. Wacky, wacky noodles. noodles. Get in the comments. Get in the comments. Wacky noodles. So, uh, you remember that, uh, uh, the, uh, the clip of you singing, uh, the, uh, the Louis, uh, Louis Armstrong song? I'm probably yeah, gonna... Fuck. Hold on, it's not that far back. Hold on. Um. Rub a head and your miles and miles from your nice warm oh. bed. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pro what I'll probably do is just have you <laughs> record yourself singing the whole song and just have that be the outro for the video. <laughs> I think we might get sued for that. Nah, it's at the ass end of the video. No one's gonna watch the whole thing. And also, like, that's fair. Like, I don't think you doing a Louis Armstrong impression will sound the same as Louis Armstrong with music. I was going for Randy Newman too. Oh, <laughs> which is, which makes it even worse. <laughs> Because I, when I'm writing the script, I am going to try to lace it with irony, so. Uh, kind of go for, because uh, the, uh, even though I, I know Jaden Animations uh, basically did the same thing that I'm doing, but the inspiration was from Alpha Rad, and all of his scripts have this, like, undertone of irony to them. This, like, uh, feeling of, like, even when I'm being serious, I'm being a smartass. And I'm, I'm gonna yeah, try to yeah, pull, yeah. pull some inspiration from that with uh, parts of the video. Like, I, I basically already know how I'm gonna handle uh, our starter's death. Also, at, at one point, uh, Ethan made a pedophilia joke, so I'm just gonna, like, uh, I'm gonna try to make that funny by basically being like, Isn't it funny that he made that joke? Is paralyzed. 
thing, dude. <laughs> I it took me a second to catch what you said. <laughs> but Yep. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a crippling depression and boy howdy do you got it. Oh god. Here's a good full quote for the for, for the video. <laughs> I really wish Muddy had uh, some rock type moves. Go depression! Woo! It doesn't affect depression. Uh, neither did my meds, really. Whoa! <laughs> That's a good one. Come on! There's no. If it doesn't, it get. Okay. Yeah. Depression leeches out of me, too. No, yeah. Uh. So. <laughs> it being paralyzed twice there. I forget what it was. Like, the context for the comic, but it was this comic I saw. Uh. It was like, wow, you must. Uh. You must, uh, get a lot done. It's like, no, I just get nothing done very fast. I get nothing done faster. I'm stupid fast. Hey! Speaking of muddy knowing rock type moves. Woo! It's like the game was listening to you. Right. Oh. Well, I, I knew that it learned rock, though. I just didn't know when. Middle. Okay, so just based on uh, on the name mm -hmm. and the fact that it does damage, what do you think confusion does? Like in like in universe. Yeah. In universe, oh, uh, it's the the Ekans, or in this instance, the Ekans. Yeah. Uh, it straight up goes on a on a trip. Like, pack your bags, kids. You're <laughs> you're tripping. Uh, and what the fuck is know, going on? Whatever it sees. This is, everything it sees is like, what is that? What is happening? I'm confused! It's in a game. Oh god! <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm being streamed right now? There's an audience? Why? I'm confused about this! I knew things! Cause I- so oh, it, it, are dimensional! Cause I always felt like, uh, like, the move Psychic was like, you're just melting the opponent's brain, and I- I felt like confusion was that, but less. Just gently massaging the brain. <laughs> but, but... If you gently massage someone's brain... How awful oh, yeah. would that fuck them up? Oh, it would... It would be devastating. Like, how the permanent is, is fucking, that? <laughs> it would be... Similar to... Uh, someone, like, getting in a car accident... And hitting their head on the steering wheel. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's a very squishy protein blob, and just one squish, and your fingers are gonna go right through. Yeah, like, it's a very non violent way to cause an extremely violent death. Yeah, dude, and it's even worse for the person, because you ever see what happens to a computer when you take the RAM out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, while it's on? <laughs> Just... <laughs> it's a very funny what way to... What happens to the person? No, yeah, I've always been like... Uh, I've always imagined, like... What do you think it looks like when you die? 
Like, does the image just freeze until your brain dies? Uh, um, are we getting into... Like, have you ever... Metaphysical talk? No, I'm talking about, like, what do you... S I, I've, so what I imagine is, like, what it looks and sounds like while your brain is dying is the same thing that happens to a Game Boy when you pull the cartridge out. Like, that awful noise oh. combined with just the same image until it stops. Yikes, dude. Yeah, <laughs> Because your, your brain is a computer that doesn't know how to process what's happening. Because you're, for obvious oh, reasons, man. we're not built to handle that. It's literally the, oh. the end of what we can handle. Personally, I think it's like a black box type thing, but I mean, that's just me. Oh, yeah. Well, it, I've heard it, so from, uh, obviously, like, our information on what it's like to die is... A little limited because we don't have many living people that went through it. <laughs> and then we from know what the chemical that releases when it does happen, and it, that chemical is known as DMT. Oh. If you watch enough Joe Rogan. I don't, but I forgot about the fact that that's literally a drug. <laughs> Dude, straight up, like does DMT a lot. Advocates for the recreational use of DMT. Uh. I'm gonna go on a limb and disagree with him. I'm pretty liberal, but nope. <laughs> I'm fairly liberal too, and I'm under the uh, insinuation that I would try anything once, as long as it's not like too crazy. But death chemicals seems a bad. Too fucking crazy. Death chemicals pretty wild. Yeah, you know. Um. So. Uh, from the general experience of people who have done DMT, it's, uh, it's almost reminiscent of, like, ascending into another plane where you're, like, it's all fractal vision, vision and shit. Gotcha. Uh. That's and interesting. Yeah. Like a kaleidoscope? They, uh, typically, people who have done DMT advocate for it in the future and also, like, are very... I imagine that anyone who's people. addicted to a drug probably advocates for it. Gonna be real. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're making a point there, Travis, and I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> uh... But, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> the death drug is a recreation, or, well, is being, you know, spearheaded as you know, something to be recreational. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real, I'm not gonna, I, death chemical, pot, not in the same category. <laughs> <laughs> um, to the FDA, they might as well be, or not the FDA, but you know what I mean. No, shouldn't be. Really shouldn't be. <laughs> Have I gone down that hole yet? I don't know. I like going down all... So there's, uh... In this dungeon, there's literally, uh... Only, like, one hole that takes you down to the, uh... To progression, and it's literally the last one. Uh... But I like going down all the side passages to get as much experience and also shit as possible. Because I never come back here. <laughs> like, the moment we exit this cave, we're never coming back. Yeah, but to, to most, that would be a hallelujah. You know, not enough yeah. Zubat. Yeah, there's a reason Zubat's a meme. Uh, my favorite, uh, so I have two equally favorite things that came out of it. Uh, one is a, uh, a fan-made version of the Pokemon rap. Oh, yeah, we've been here. But, uh, the fan-made version of the Pokemon rap, uh, which is the Cave Edition, which is literally just Zubat. Zubat, Zubat, Zubat. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a part where it's like, Matropel. And it stops for a bit. Effect War Off. Zubat, 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 Zubat. <laughs> Uh, uh, Geo, dude, Zubat, 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 Zubat. It's it's pretty. It's five minutes of that. 
Uh, but my other uh, thing that's slightly more official is in Pokemon X and Y, there is a cave called Zubat Cave. <laughs> I wonder why. It is, it, it's funny, because it's like, wow, finally, like, 15 years later, you're in on the joke, huh? <laughs> why do I keep wanting to use Rock Throw on this grass type? Why is that a thing I keep trying? And yep. We're actually- so I think uh, having a not full team is actually helping us. Because honestly we're kind of on track to deal with uh, Misty once we get out. Because her Pokemon are in the- uh, she's the next gym leader and her Pokemon are in the 20s. Oh shit. Yeah. And usually like, uh, before I fight her, I because I've played through this region a handful of times, I usually have to grind a lot before I fight her. Honestly, we've got kind of a pretty rounded team. We really do. Fodder, who's literally just fodder. Yeah, he's here to be here. Uh, but he, like, he's happy to be here, folks. But it sucks that we lost our starter happen. because fire types are rare in literally every game. Uh, there's just not a lot of Pokemon that are fire type. Uh, Noodle, come on. But uh, yeah. Uh, Outside of our lack of fire, we're doing pretty hot. I was hoping that'd get a laugh. Uh, and now we're here. Crickets. Crickets. Yeah. Crickets. <laughs> the only thing in this cave that I'm worried about is there's a uh, super nerd who uh, we have to fight in order to progress, and he's, like, he's not crazy hard, but his Pokemon are kinda high level. They're kinda beefy. Y yeah. And also, one of them knows Minimize, which makes it harder to hit them. So that's fun. <laughs> Bring it all back now, dude. Yeah. Uh, confusion. I wish it were literally possible for us to have a water or grass type right now. It's not. Noodle. Problem. All right. So we could, we do have bullet seed, but I don't want to use it. <laughs> Because we only have one of those, and also I'm. Do we have a paralyzed heal? Because I'm a little tired of dealing with uh, with uh, Noodle being paralyzed. We do. Holy shit! We have one paralyzed heal. Also, that Moonstone might end up coming in handy because there are some Pokemon that can only evolve when they're exposed to it. And there's like four of them in this entire game. Uh, you got crabs. Uh, it's a gnat. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, uh, when Pokemon Go first came out, I caught one of these. And I showed it to my buddy. And I was like, hey, what should I name this? And he said, one regretful night. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So yeah, it's literally uh, the number one because it uh, character limitations. It's the number one regretful night. <laughs> yeah. No regret. Uh, play nicknaming nicknaming enough Pokemon will teach you that there is an art to taking out uh to taking out. Uh, vowels when naming something. And there's only yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I lost my train of thought there. 
so there's there is a Nuzlocke that I used to uh, like watching a lot. Uh, it's no longer on the internet, but it was by uh, Nate and Dookie. Uh, and they caught an electric type in it, and they're like, "Oh, we should name it." Like they were uh, having issues coming up with uh, with names. And they're like, "Oh, like it's it's female, so like Halle Berry, like like Storm from X Men." So instead, the person behind the controller named it uh, S T R M F R M X M N <laughs> Storm from X Men. <laughs> That's funny. I, why did I do that? Why was that the things that my thumbs did? Okay. But yeah, that's not on YouTube anymore, so that's not stolen content anymore. Ha. Huh. Alright, I gotta call it. Alright, I'll uh, end this Geodude's existence and then, yeah, I'll save and quit. Okay, well, uh, it's been really fun talking to you, at least, and watching yeah, you play Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, next time I'll do this. When I'll, you're I'll, doing the next one. No, yeah, that's what I was gonna say, is I'll probably give you a little more warning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'll talk to you later, man. Yeah, see you, dude. I'll save before I end the stream. Bit bat bam.